Hello, I just bought this uh, Sunco 737B, which is a battery spot welder, because quite often when you're fixing vintage synthesizers and things, you get these little CR2032s and things with the tabs that are spot welded onto it, and you have to change them, and that's for the kind of the battery backup and things. And yes, you can buy them with the spot tabs on them and things like that, but I kind of thought I want to be able to make them myself. Now what this actually does is it uh, takes the mains voltage and it reduces it down to four or five volts, but then that gives it 80 to 800 amps. And so between these two contacts, these pins here, that's enough to weld a piece of uh, nickel onto a battery. I'll show you what you get with it. You get the usual uh, instruction manual in a sort of English-ish type, but it's, it's understandable. And it also comes with a few bits and pieces, a few accessories. This is a nice little tool. And what you do with that, they've got magnets in the back here. So you can line up uh, 18650 batteries, like so and uh, put your piece of strip across the top there and then spot weld them and they'll all be you know correctly in a line hopefully and you also get a sort of various amounts of different thicknesses of uh, nickel plated iron i think this is it's not pure nickel i think only one of them is actually pure nickel sheet which is the super thick one and on there it tells you that's for 10 to 15 amps through current and things like that, which is useful information. But I already got some nickel strips anyway to work with, because what I've got to do is make up a battery pack. Now this battery pack is for a Nagra D, a digital reel-to-reel -reel recorder. And this battery pack is actually from 2001, and uh, it just doesn't perform anymore. So I decided, I'll buy all the batteries, get hold of one of these machines, and have a go at making that myself. So I'll get onto that. But the important thing is the little CR2032s that uh, always seem to be the thing that eventually goes in vintage synthesizers and things. And yes, they need replacing. So I think I've just about set this up correctly. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, variations of uh, the, the width of the pins. If, if they're too close together, it won't weld. If they're too far apart, it doesn't weld. And uh, the pulse current and how many pulses it actually does to weld the strip onto the battery. You're not actually changing the current here, not really. All you're doing is uh, extending the time that the machine is actually on. Now, these uh, little arms here, they're quite sort of flexible, and there's a little switch in there, so you can adjust how much pressure you need to put on here before it actually welds. So, if I put this on there, say, and push it up, there you go, it's as easy as that. That's welded, and it's, it's pretty strong as well. And uh, then, yes, you can cut this to whatever shape you like and put it on the board and replace it in a synthesizer or something. And then I don't have to keep buying these batteries with the special strips already on there. I can just make them myself. These machines come in various flavors. Uh, some of them have one pulse, two pulse, eight pulses. You can adjust all those. This only gives you one or two pulses. And other machines have sort of soldering iron, attachments and uh, charging circuits for actually charging up your battery packs when you've made your batteries up and things like that which is handy but uh, yeah I just went for the cheap and cheerful all I want to do is just spot weld a tab onto a battery if you have the it's not the current it's the time of course if you have the time too high you're in danger of actually piercing the battery and uh, then you've just damaged the battery, basically. What you'll see is there's two spots where it welded. And so what's happened is the current has gone in there and out there and through the bottom of the battery. 
and that just welds this piece into place. Yeah, that's good. I'm happy with that. I can make those myself now. Brilliant. Oh, I forgot to mention, you also get a foot switch with this. And what this little foot switch is for is you can unscrew these two pieces off the front uh, where, where your contacts are, your copper probes, if you wish, and you can put on a handheld device so you can set up batteries and just use a handheld device and press down and then you use the foot switch to actually activate the unit. So, I didn't get that bit unfortunately, they're about £35. Uh, it would have been useful but I just want to make this battery pack up. And buying that and these batteries is cheaper than buying a replacement one of these. So in the long run, I've got another piece of equipment that I can use for all my other little jobs and it will have paid for itself in this one job. So I'm going to take this apart and this is my first attempt so I might completely mess this up. Just make a new battery pack. I haven't got this uh, heat shrink material so it's going to look a little bit of a bodge because I'm going to have to use sticky tape but why not let's see yep yeah, that's on good get in there there you go, look at that, easy. Right, I've got to try and uh, line these up, but maybe put them in a box or something. So I've made that row and that row, and now I've got to connect these together. So I come up with a cardboard box here, and I've wedged the batteries in with bits of cardboard and things, so they're pretty stiff in there. So now what I've got to do is sort of just put these strips across there, and hopefully, if all goes to plan, fingers crossed, I should be able to fold it over into that shape. And uh, I think the easiest way to do this is if I put the strip like that and then use a magnet, that's gonna hold that where I want it to be and then just move it along until I've done all five of them. So let's have a go at that. See if that's gonna work. Of course, I've only got so much working space under here, so let me see. Mm, those pins are a bit far apart for this, but it might work. Yeah, that's okay. This is so much easier than actually soldering the batteries and safer as well because you're not going to put the battery under any stress of uh, high temperatures. Now the trick is to fold it. So how am I going to do this? Oh, I don't know. I think that'll be okay. Got to keep these as flat as possible. It's actually quite difficult keeping all these level put this down the centre there and across there this is uh, called Heath Robinson style right there you go that's the shape just like that perfect now then Put these uh, two wires on. Oh, I should have gone underneath the uh, sticky there. Doesn't matter. It'll run down there somehow. All right, so I'll just desolder this. Turn on the soldering iron and get that soldered up. Mm. I could have actually pulled that tab off and just used that one because it's already got a bit of solder lug on it. But uh, no, I think we'll be okay. Just a bit of heat shrink tubing. Yeah, I should have really ran the battery down, uh, the wire down the side of the battery there. But I don't really think it's going to make a, a great difference. It would have got stuck to the actual tape anyway, and would have made it awkward to put it together. So I think I think I'll get away with that. 
with a bit of tape over the top should be okay now I think I'm going to tape up these ends as well I'm not going to bother putting that on that doesn't want to fit anyway uh, what I'll do I'll protect these edges because these are quite sharp you don't want these punching through here and short circuiting against anything so put a bit there Hmm, still doesn't look pretty because of that wire. There you go. How's that? It's like a shop bought one before, after. Same size, of course. Brilliant. So basically, this is the circuit diagram of what's happening inside one of these machines. So you've got a transformer and it's mains driven and the secondary coil will be just a few turns of very thick gauge wire. Now some people who make these machines themselves use something like a microwave transformer and they'll strip out the secondary coil and just loop some very thick gauge wire in there and it'll do the same job. Now that will reduce the voltage. The more it reduces the voltage, the higher the amperage will be. And that's the whole point of this, basically. Now, where the probes are, when you push the probes up, that activates a switch. And that tells this timer to turn on the transformer for a given amount of time. Now, some of these controllers will do it twice or four times. And that's the amount of pulses. Uh, other than that, that, that's basically it. You can actually buy these circuit boards on Amazon and all over the place that will do the job. And these are about 10, maybe 20 pounds. This one is a relay version and it will only give one pulse. Whereas you can buy them specifically for making one of these yourself. And they're a bit more complex. They use SCRs, which is silicon controlled rectifiers. And uh, you can program them to do two pulses or four pulses or whatever. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. It's quite simple, really. So there you go. I've made my first little battery pack for my Nagra D recorder. And uh, yeah, there you go. It was pretty easy. It wasn't difficult to figure out how to make that. Uh, I'm sure that will last a few years. But I like the fact that I can just do these CR2032s and things when I'm repairing synthesizers and things. I'll be able to put my own tabs on them, which is great. Uh, so must say that this video is not sponsored by anybody. Uh, this is a Sunco. They didn't send it to me. I bought this off Amazon and paid full price for it, which was £75 and some pennies, whatever. So this is not sponsored. Uh, what you do get is lots of uh, different thicknesses of the metal strips and things and you can also buy those separately anyway as I did. I bought these before this machine arrived and I didn't realise it was going to come with all these anyway. Never mind. Uh, I do like this sort of magnetic uh, 18650 battery holder. That could be useful. Uh, comes with a foot switch. But the foot switch really is if you've got the handheld piece for this, which I didn't buy. That was about uh, £35, I think, for that piece. But I might try and make one of those anyway. And, uh, yeah, it works. It's, uh, it's simple. It just works. Spot welder. Very nice. £75. It did trip my fuse once. But, uh, yeah, it's stood up. It's not hot. It's, it's just doing exactly what it was supposed to do. So yeah, if you can get this for £75, I think that's a reasonably okay price for it. Like I say, this is the absolute rock bottom uh, version of these. And uh, yeah, I think it's a nice little bit of kit. Anyhow, if you like that video, please give us a thumbs up and have a look at my other videos. Subscribe if you can. All the best and thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.